It is Wednesday and it is two o'clock, so that can only mean one thing. It is time for So What's the Catch here on the So What's the Catch Facebook page or wherever you are watching us or listening to us uh, on YouTube, podcast platforms, whatever. So it is draft week. You guys excited for this? Of course. I mean, the Browns aren't really in it. Always excited to talk football. But the Browns, the Browns are in it just because they don't have a first round. The second pick. round. Yeah, they're still in it. Second round picks are very valuable, Shirk. Yeah. I mean, come on. JOK, second round pick. Greedy Williams, second round yeah, pick. Greg Delpit, second round pick, was useful yeah. last year. You you were hating that you were hating on uh, Greedy Williams. Because the dude hadn't played in like a year and a half, and he looked like he has a shoulder made out of glass. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he had nerve damage in his shoulder. Like, what do you want? Yeah. Like it, it just takes one hit and he has no feeling in his arm anymore and he's done. Yeah, we we have a problem with drafting often injured uh, defensive backs for whatever reason. Healthy. Yeah, yeah. It, it seems like any DBs we've get, gotten through the draft have had at, at least some major injury issues. Yeah. It feels like any Maybe. player we draft has some type of issue or something. That's football. Yeah. Yeah. But we'll get to the draft stuff a little bit later. First, we're going to start with the NBA playoffs, which the Nets are out. They got swept. Cavs should have been in it. The same thing would have happened to us, bro. Same thing. Yeah, it would have been uglier. Yeah. As much as I would have loved to have seen the Cavs in – that series against the Celtics, it, we wouldn't have done much better than Brooklyn did. We would have got we would probably, have gotten one or two wins. No, no they wouldn't have. Yeah, the Celtics would have the one and three somehow. Yeah, they would have won in three. They would have, been, they would have been mercy. Is what would have yeah. happened? Okay. Yeah. Let, let's let's look at the you know how the teams are put together. Uh, the Nets have Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. Those are two superstars. The Cavs don't have one yet. Maybe Mobley gets they got there. Garland. Maybe Garland gets there. But they they out there. Their way, but they're not there yet. You know, right. they're not proven superstars yet. So right. I mean yeah, really good point. Garland made the all-star game, but that's that doesn't make you an all-star caliber player. Like you need to just because you make one all-star team doesn't mean anything. I would agree with that, especially when it's you know in Cleveland. I agree. You know, so you, Kind exactly. of about in that situation. Right. Yeah, they, and the yeah, only kind of reason rigged. the only reason Jared Allen even got into the all-star game is because James Harden got injured and couldn't play. So he was an all-star replacement. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah I, I think that happens every year. You know, wherever the all-star game is, there's always going to be a guy that gets in that probably doesn't have any business being there. Because <laughs> because they want they want to appease the hometown that's there. I mean, they do more often than not. Uh, very rarely does a does uh, the hometown crowd not get uh, a little bit of a you know a nod, <laughs> or at least way for them to get you know into it. But it's, mm. it's like this in every sport. Yeah, yeah. It t- it just takes a real dickhead not to you know not do the right thing. But you know, it yeah. happens. It, are you basically yeah. saying these all star games are rigged, James? No, I'm saying one, they're pointless. But two. That a lot of times, even though the right thing to do would be to have the nod to the home team, a lot of times they don't. Yeah. Yeah, it goes both ways. Sometimes yeah. sometimes you don't. And, and it also has a lot to do with the market, you know, <laughs> and the marketability of the player. <laughs> they were really nice to Cleveland this year. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a surprise. very likable team. You know, this was a team that, like, over as to, or overperformed expectations. So like we had a lot of people rooting for us in, in that underdog sort of way. Yeah. Right. So I think that that, that kind of made it a little bit more special. Um, and it gave those guys a little bit more of a nod. Yeah. I agree with you on that one, Brian. Mm-hmm. Um, but looking at this net Celtic series, I think that there's a solid argument that this Going into it, this was the most intriguing first-round series 
maybe in NBA history. And on top of it is the Ben Simmons conspiracy. The conspiracy? Is that what, what we're conspiracy? Calling? The dude didn't play. I yeah. played as many minutes as Ben Simmons did, okay? Some people some people question whether he was really injured or not. That's all. All four of us combined have play as, played as many minutes in this first-round series as Ben Simmons did. I mean, I mean, what what purpose would him, like, pretending to be hurt have? How does that benefit the Nets? Yeah, that's that's the, the one part I don't understand. Like, I, maybe he didn't want to play, but I don't think it had anything to do with – you know, faking injury or anything. Like yeah, that. Now, if, so. if they're playing the Sixers, maybe I'd buy into this conspiracy. Yeah, but I don't either. They were. They're playing the Celtics. Mm-hmm. I was just making fun of the fans who are making it that. Uh, well, you have those crazy people in every fan base, mm-hmm. right? I mean, did Ben Simmons not say that he was having some like some like issues, like emotional, mental issues? That yeah, like, he's been having a lot of a. Uh, mental issues so. right so you know there's some stuff going on there with him that obviously he's trying to work through so i i don't think it's him faking anything really yeah. i just think what, that they were down is, 3-0 a team's never overcame a 3-0 deficit you yeah know, and, point I of mean, going, i don't feel great and we're probably not going to win this series you know it's like it, it kind of made more sense for them to just keep them out because they never had a chance in this series right so he, he has to play with those guys right so, i mean it, you see certain teams and, you know, they might be out with one of their, their best players for a while or out with someone for a while and they try and reintegrate them during the playoffs. And it, a lot of times it doesn't work and they, yeah. just, they, they simply stop being effective. Or in the case of one player on the Nets, Kevin Durant, he blows out his Achilles. Mm-hmm. Right. And he sat for how many games in that playoff run to the finals? He didn't play in all of them. No. He You're missed right. at least a series mm-hmm. because of his injury. Then he right. came back. He had his little dance he did in the locker room on the way, which <laughs> with how everything unfolded in that game is just like, you're happy now, but man, you're going to be mad in about an hour and a half. Oh, um, yeah. yeah. Uh, but, I mean, you saw that, and that will happen sometimes. They done something in the back of his head. And, like, I don't want to have a season-ending injury for next year. I'm right. at a very pivotal point in my career. Yeah, um, I think that had a lot to do with position at the net in that series it, it, to me it made sense it was a smart move if anything by ben simmons if he did decide to keep himself out um because yeah like you said it's there it wasn't going to impact the series in any way and obviously he doesn't feel great he has no experience practicing with these guys yet so what's the point of throwing him in there and risking him re-injuring something or you know having some sort of bad game due to a mental issue or whatever it is, you know, like there's no point in him going out there and doing that. Right. Um, I know there are some people questioning whether that, whether the legitimacy of the mental issues thing, I'm, I'm not one of them, but I know that's also going around. Yeah, of course. You know, people have their opinions one way or the other on the issue. Um, I, yeah. I just think that we should be empathetic of that because like when we look at athletes in the past and how they've been treated in these situations, you know, usually it's not good. And it seems like there's been this like concerted effort to give it more attention, like with the Simone Biles situation with the Olympics. I'm Mm -hmm. pretty sure, I'm pretty sure back in the day they had the mental issues. They just lied about it and called it an injury. They probably called it an injury they had in their past Mm -hmm. to make it somewhat legit. Uh, I, that's my guess of what they probably did back in the day with the men. The more real, well, the the more I guess realistic thing that would have happened is they would have suppressed all that shit and just you know drank it away or did a ton of drugs. Exactly. Okay? <laughs> no, I, I think some lied about an injury. Uh, sure, maybe some did, but like it, it, as far as the mental thing goes, it's it was just, it's alcohol, drugs, and God yeah. knows what else they got into. Yeah. Right. Oh my. Yeah. Yeah. It was a crazy time back in the day. I just think that they should. These two situations should be treated similarly. Like, it, if if you're willing to accept it, you know, with the Simone Biles situation, why wouldn't you be able to accept it from Ben Simmons? And to me, it's because people have preconceived notions about Ben as a person, and they don't. You know, it's a lot of people that have hated on Ben Simmons his whole career. So it's like, are you really going to take their opinion seriously from the beginning? You know, right? And I think part of the reason for that, Brian, is because. 
he seems to have a track record of quote unquote quitting on his team. Like he, he quit on the 76ers and some people think he's already quitting on the nets, even though he hasn't played a minute for them. I'm not, I'm not at that point yet. Right. But like some people think he even quit on LSU when he came out of the draft or when he came out of LSU to go to the draft, I should say. People have painted the narrative of him his entire career. Being exactly. In- yeah. It, it doesn't make it true, but you're right. That has been the narrative. You, you mentioned the quitting on LSU thing to go into the draft. Like, if you would have been a second rounder, that is something to even make noteworthy. The dude was the first overall pick. Right. If you're the first overall pick in anything and your options are stay somewhere else that doesn't really benefit you at all another year or – Go be the first overall pick. Go be the first overall pick. Don't fuck mm-hmm. around. Go get the money. Go get paid. Go he, make yourself career uh, wise. He doesn't have first overall pick shooting. Who gives a shit? That doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. That, 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 you know, he still knew he was going. He went. It was the right decision. Is the point? You know, yeah. it is. In hindsight, it, like you said, if if you would have slipped down, you know, for whatever reason, out of the top ten or whatever, and mm-hmm. then sure, maybe. But yeah, it was the first overall goddamn pick. Like, and you're gonna hold it against him that he went. I mean, what happens if he has a an injury next season at LSU, or or he just has a bad year or a down year, or doesn't yeah. progress, you know, or doesn't progress the way that people think he should have, and then he slips out of the first round completely. Like things happen. So exactly to yeah. put that at risk, like it. It's just a smart decision by Ben. And I think this is another instance of him making a smart decision. And Mm -hmm. because people have already painted this narrative of him, it's confirmation bias. It's, well, I think Ben Simmons is a quitter. I've been calling him a quitter. So now that he has this issue, oh, that fits my narrative. So he's a quitter. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Were you expecting this series to go the full seven, though? Or did you think it was going to kind of go this way with Boston dominating the series like they did? I I thought I was going to go to, like, uh, probably, like – Maybe five or six. I didn't think. I honestly thought it would be a six or seven game series. I'll admit that. I, I, I thought it would be probably five games, but honestly, I thought it'd be going the other direction. You, yeah. Where? How far wow. do you think Boston can go? Let's talk about Boston. Well, considering that they kicked that bum Brad Stevens to the curb, and he's no longer their head coach, and they have a real, an actual good head coach in Emmy Udoka, who knows how far they can go? Because the story's been on the Celtics they flame out or they get beat by a lesser team every single year. This was a a prime moment for Brad Stevens to completely flop in the first round of the playoffs. And that didn't happen because he's not there. Right. The coaching change has done wonders for this team. I mean, he, he, he was a role player in the NBA and it seems like a lot of those guys seem to be good head coaches. Yeah. And and for everybody out there who thinks that NBA head coaches don't matter, like, they it's do. Time, it's time for you to come have a seat at the adults' table and realize that it does. It's and, right. And Boston was, is 100% case in point why it matters. The, yeah. The first series, it encapsulates that perfectly. I think it, to expand on that point, Brian, I think it goes both ways in this series because you had Ime Udoka, who, like, all the Celtics players seem to have bought into – the way he's coaching and all that, and you see how they're playing, you have many people picking them to come out of the East now, which I think that we're on a collision course for Golden State against Boston in the NBA Finals, but we, that's a different discussion for a different day. But then on God, the other hand, <laughs> on the, the, the Warriors will win that series. I don't, I don't want that to happen. So let the, no. the Warriors won't win that series. The Warriors will win that series. You know right. why I'm saying that, right? Why? They beat the Cavs. Uh, oh. um, who cares? But like, the teams Warriors teams. will win that series if they play the Celtics. Anyway, on the other end of the spectrum, you have Steve Nash, who was put in this kind of awkward situation where. Like, you had Kyrie saying, like, oh, we don't need a head coach. We can coach ourselves. And so the net, I think the Nets kind of bent to Kyrie's 
demands a little bit and said, okay, you don't need a coach. We'll go out and hire somebody who has no head coaching experience. I don't even know if Steve Nash has an ounce of coaching experience, period. Um, I have no idea. Uh, no, I, I think you're I being no nice idea. calling him Steve Nash because the internet has taken to calling him Steve Trash. Okay? <laughs> they have. I mean, as 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 an owner, not as a player, or not not owner. I mean, uh, as a coach, coach. As yeah. A coach. yeah. Oh, yeah. Nobody's questioning his ability as a player, but his coaching ability is definitely up for discussion now. Right, yeah, it is. And if you're going to have a team with the, um, I guess the appeal the, I guess, the premier spot in the NBA in regards to how highly regarded they are and how much respect they have around the league, I think having a, a new coach or a guy with little experience is a terrible idea. Oh, right? yeah. I mean, the, the only reason it worked in Miami is because Pat Riley is still heavily involved in that team. Okay. I mean, That's the only reason Eric Spolster worked. The reason but why they have Look at all the other guys. I mean – uh who was the kid uh, that uh, LeBron got fired at the year after he was there? Um, in Miami, uh, Luke Walton. Luke Walton yeah, Luke Luke got kicked to the curb. Mm-hmm. You know, they even won a title with fucking uh, Frank Vogel, and they kicked him to the curb. You know why? Because they're not going to push back on these guys. They're afraid yeah. to. Right. And and I also want to point out with Steve Nash that was a that was Kevin. I think that's because him and Kevin Durant like had a good personal relationship. They did because uh, Nash worked with the Warriors, I believe, as uh, like a shooting yeah. or some shit. Yeah. So, so they built a relationship there. But you need some guy that is going to stand up to these people, and they're not going to. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it, yeah. If, uh, if they challenge the coach on something, the coach isn't going to fire back, or the coach might not even challenge the player because they, of who they, they are. They also, it, on that extreme, can't can't like go to the too much of that military style either. So you need to find a mix in between. It's not that. even a, a military style type thing. It's just having to There's, know that like you're the coach in this situation. You need to be telling them what there, to do. There, there is like one, ones who are like just unreasonable though. Some yeah. are. And those are the ones That's that get, saying. those are the ones that get fired. Okay. Right. But when you have the, you know, Durant oh, yeah. and Kyrie on this team, with the high expectations, they did have James Harden for a minute. Mm-hmm. And, they flop like this, and you look at the coach, and yeah, he's got to hold his ground at times. You're right; you can't. You need them all over just, you. You're not wrong. Look what happened in Miami if, like, LeBron or Dwayne Wade or Chris Bob got pissed off at Eric Spolcher. Pat Riley's coming down to you know smack some heads and be like, mm-hmm. "Get in line." Yeah, okay? yeah. Even, yeah. Even though Riley wasn't the coach, he still had, he still pulled a lot of weight in that building. Yeah. yeah. You you need structure as a team, you know, and part of that structure is you know it has to have. A chain of command, you know, there has to be a chain of command. And like when you when you hire a guy as a head coach, you're you want that guy to be the one that that is leading the team and not following, you know. And yeah. Steve Nash is more of a, a guy that they brought in that is gonna be a player's guy. Like the player are you know, the players are gonna like him. And if they've got an objection to something, he'll probably let them have their way. You know what I mean? And we're seeing now that that's not it doesn't work in, in the NBA. It just doesn't. You, you no, it doesn't. That. You, you got to be a player. Experiment in L.A., and it's a failed experiment in Brooklyn. So uh, yeah. the, the only time that that strategy has worked that I can remember is Ty Lue with the Cavs. Yeah. Uh, outside of that, it is, they're, they're colossal failures everywhere yeah. that happens. Yeah. I, mean, uh, even I, with- I remember back 15 years ago, I think, uh, the Pistons hired Michael Curry as their coach mm-hmm. after they got rid of um, – the guy who used to coach the Timberwolves. I can't remember his name. Oh, um, Flip Saunders? Yeah, they were to Flip Saunders. They, they hired Michael Curry, and they flopped mm-hmm. so hard. And he lasted one season. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think, I think you also had to look at um, this Brooklyn situation, the fact that, you know, Kyrie t- took the actions that he did. And so at first he was only allowed to play road games. And then eventually he was allowed to play both home and away. But I, if I remember correctly, the whole team only got to play like 21 games together. So that's not a lot of continuity. So, of course, no, there was- it's, it's not. And you're right. It's not a whole lot of continuity. I mean, I think they uh, even with when they saw James Harden in the mix, they played all of 13 games together. Exactly. Is is absurd when you think about it. 
but I, the whole playing road games and playing home, that's such a just – it's not an issue anymore, mm-hmm. okay? I'm not saying well, it he is. Had, he had the ability to play other, way, other places. He had the ability to practice elsewhere if he chose so. Like – He's already played with you know Durant before. He's already played with some of the other guys on the team through various other things, whether it be pickup games or Olympic team or whatever. Mm-hmm. So right. it, it, he's not foreign to these players. It's not like in the '80s where you haven't played with this guy ever and you're kind of thrust in the situation. They say that's a lot. Right. Yeah. Some of these guys grew up together in uh, a- AAU. Yeah, a ton of them do. Yeah, a lot yeah. of them they didn't know that part. Class, so. Yeah, I get – no, James, I totally understand what you're saying, and I don't disagree. So I'm just saying no. But anyway, looking at some of the other series, uh, Miami defeated Atlanta in five. Not surprised. Yeah. Miami shut down Trey Young in this series. That – for them to even win – to win game four or game five, excuse me, last night without Jimmy Butler and without Kyle Lowry. So Miami was without their starting backcourt for the Heat to win that game. That shows me something. Yeah, I just think that the, the Hawks just aren't that good, you know, in my opinion. Not, that, that was a lucky year last season. Mm-hmm. Do you think uh, Trey I, Young is overrated? No. I don't think Trey Young's overrated, but I think the Hawks team as a whole is overrated. Yeah. Uh, look back uh, comparatively to the early LeBron Cavs, mm-hmm. where they were winning a ton of games, and it was because of LeBron and like the half leg that Big Z still had. Okay, mm-hmm. that was it. We had like what a moment with Drew Gooden, uh, yeah. Daniel Marshall was a thing, Sasha Pavlovich. I mean, look at all these clowns that he played with. And Daniel Gibson. Like, the reason they're winning, it's not because of the other guys. It's because the other, it's because you know LeBron was the best player on the team uh, and on the court. Trey Young uh, is the best player on his team by far, and at times the best player on the court. Was yeah. Larry Hughes like injured when he was on the Cavs? Larry Hughes probably. I mean, he was largely useless, but I mean, um, he was good before then. So do you think LeBron stunted his growth? Maybe. No, Larry Hughes oh. stunk. I mean, this is the, <laughs> that's the same crap argument he, he had twenty points JR the Cavs. So that's why. After, I asked that. LeBron has like, never made a player. Anything other than better, he right. either had a non non impact on a player or he Kyle made Kuzma. What? Who cares? Who gives a shit about Kyle Kuzma? I was just saying him because that was a player that stunt was growth stunt or his growth was stunted because of LeBron. I mean, I don't think Kyle Kuzma's that good. I'm sorry. No. Yeah, LeBron didn't do anything to Kyle Kuzma. No, that's no. a crazy notion. Yeah. But you're acting, you're acting like he's taking like a, a lead pipe to his shin and being like yeah, you're not in an insecure <laughs> situation. Brandon yeah. Ingram. Okay, he didn't, who cares? He didn't steal his talent. You're, you're, like sure, you're, you're, you're listing off guys that are like nice secondary and tertiary pieces. You're not naming off stars here, okay? Right. <laughs> and so I mean, the the impact and the effectiveness that those players will have are more dependent on who they're playing with, not in regards to their own ability. Okay, mm-hmm. like look at that entire Lakers young core that NBA Twitter did nothing but masturbate to for three years, and <laughs> you're gonna just look and see where they are now, and it's just like, yeah, they're good secondary, third, fourth players. They're nothing special. <laughs> I remember that. Okay. I remember when they like had like Lonzo Ball, and they were, <laughs> and they were like, hype, man, they were hyping up. They were hyping. Where up are they Julius, now? Julius Randall. <laughs> single on that team still, number one. Number two. They're all elsewhere being like, yeah, that guy plays for that team now. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm not wrong, right? <laughs> I mean, Chirk, Chirk, in your, I'll back you up a little bit on Brandon hey. Ingram, actually. What, what about when they had uh, Robert Sacre? <laughs> Chirk, I'm trying to help you. Chirk, I'm trying to help you here, dude. All right. <laughs> no, I, I'll back you up a little bit on Brandon Ingram. because. Okay. One thing, Thank you. Because I'm not fully defending you, but I'm just saying when he got – when he did get to New Orleans, he's turned into a nice ca- a nice player. Made the all-star James, team this year. James? Once New Orleans – once they got CJ to pair with him, 
He's developed into a, a nice, solid player. The Pelicans are pushing the Phoenix Suns right to their absolute limit. I don't think New Orleans is ultimately Dang. going to win the series against Dang. Phoenix. But all I'm saying is Ingram has... Just you de- <laughs> has de- Just you nice. sure. That's all. <clears throat> Thank you, Josh. I just I want to hear one way that LeBron made any that made him worse. You know what I mean? Like, it, that, oh, Kevin Love. There is one, and here's why because I have the numbers in front of me. Okay. He took a nice little leap from 16 points to 18 points a game in his only season with Oops. LeBron as his teammate. He shot a still career high 49.7% from the field. He mm. made, let's see, oh, LeBron was injured. 2.1% of his two point attempts. LeBron yeah. was injured during this time. He got injured. He had an effective season. field goal percentage of 51.8. Got minus to his career up to that point. He got injured that season. I remember yeah. LeBron got injured that season. So I Brandon used... Ingram, he only played 52 games. Wait, yeah. James, I never said I agreed with Chirk about LeBron I, making Here's Brandon. what I'm saying is that he shot more this year, his first season with LeBron, and he was more productive compared to the season prior. All right, speaking of Brandon Ingram, let's talk about that, Pelicans. Okay, yeah. Pelicans, Suns. <laughs> this is, for me, this has been the most surprising series. I thought Phoenix was just going to walk over the New Orleans Pelicans. I thought, okay, New Orleans has some nice players, but Phoenix is just on a different level. I thought Phoenix was going to win every game by 20-plus. We also well, thought Devin, Devin Booker, Booker got hurt. healthy. Yeah, Devin Booker got hurt. That's the, the, this whole series is all contingent on that one injury. Like that, to think that this series would look this way if he was still healthy, I think would be dishonest. Like I think that they probably sweep easy. So, I agree with I you. It's yeah. an indictment on the Suns playing poorly. It's just that they're they're missing their best player right now. So yeah. what do you expect? You know when you're. You're missing the guy that that makes the whole thing go, you know. The the talent gap between the teams is significantly smaller without Devin Booker there. Right, right. Agreed. And, and so that's that's the only reason why this is even a competitive series. Yeah. It's like nobody in their right mind would be like, I'm gonna pick the Pelicans to beat the Suns, because oh. it's dumb. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, even with Zion Williamson. Uh, in their lineup, yeah. nobody would pick the Pelicans to beat the Suns. No, yeah, Zion is has, is so frustrating because you see, like, the Pelicans keep holding him out, and yet he keeps posting these videos on his social media platforms of him doing like windmill dunks and stuff like that. It's like, okay, you're healthy enough to do that, but you can't suit up. Like, he, he doesn't want my to understanding. From my understanding, this is a Pelican decision, not a Zion decision. And I, I think it, Zion doesn't and, want to play for them. I, I mean, I, would you want to play for the Pelicans? I mean, I, I mean, it would be grateful to know after Anthony Davis left, I'm the next guy to. Uh, yeah, because before Anthony Davis left, Chris Paul left. Okay, let's not let's not forget about when that. When they were the Hornets, but it was still the same franchise. Yeah, it's still the same yeah. franchise all the way around. So, so he left then. They draft Anthony Davis, and he's great. Then he leaves, and now they draft Zion Williamson. And he's just like, well, I'm I'm next, so just gotta I mean, wait. I, I think he just wants to get traded. I don't even think he wants to wait for his next extension. I mean, the dude's got to start playing first. I mean, it, one and you know, second, caps. look at play more, right. eat less, play more, eat less. I, I think he he's really is, the I dude think, is so overweight. I think he's trying to eat his way out of the the team. Oh, well, the difference between, you know, uh, Zion doing it and James Harden is, you know, James Harden showed that he's one of the best players in the oh. league. Uh, Zion has showed impressive stretches at times. Mm-hmm. But yeah. nowhere near him having a bad weekend and gaining 20 pounds because he ate nothing but, like, you know, donuts and drank beer. That's not going to get him out of town. It, it's possible, yeah. though, that some of these players just gain weight because of stress in those organizations, not even eating bad. Yeah, not I mean, Zion, but... a lot of people to gain weight, sure, but you know, I, I don't think that that's that's probably more of a exception than a rule, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It, well, if you look at the one thing, like what's the one thing that everyone said about Zion that he needs to get under control when he got drafted? It was weight. weight. Mm-hmm. 
he's gotten progressively heavier. Yeah. Right. Like, it's it's not like trying to like give him a hard time because he's overweight. It's like, listen, like the one thing everyone was concerned about was your weight. Yeah. And you have done nothing to address that. No, right. he hasn't. And so, you get a guy like LeBron too, who used to be a bigger guy, who who knew if if he wanted to extend his career <laughs> and remain healthy, like he needed to get thinner. You know, probably was like a good two eighty at his like heyday. LeBron? Yeah. Oh, for sure, he's huge. Like, like I think he was a good two eighty. Like I like, don't know about two eighty, yeah, but he was, he was up there. He was a big dude. Right. Maybe two seventy five. Sure. What what are we at a carnival? Are we, <laughs> <laughs> are we, are we a prize if we get within five pounds? No. Yeah, I would. I was yeah, gonna I say. Are let's we... let's move on from this. Okay. All right. Um, did you guys watch any of that? Tim, excuse me, Timberwolves Grizzlies game five last night. I did. Uh, no. Was there another protester? No. That's all I care about. Yeah. It was a bad. <laughs> Minnesota once again blew another double digit lead. And Memphis won in the final seconds. Does the Timberwolves, the Timberwolves have any, suck? They don't have any business in this playoffs. The Timberwolves suck. Let's just stick with that because that, hey, that seems to be the most accurate Car- here. Carl Anthony Towns and D'Angelo Russell are, and uh, what's his name? Uh, Anthony, Anthony Edwards. Edwards. Those three are those three are cool. Yeah, Anthony I Edwards might be something. I have no idea. Those three but, are like, cool. Carl Anthony Towns ain't that guy. D'Angelo Russell, he's fine, but he's a bench guy. No, right. he's not. I think he's a good starter. He's okay. not a good starter. He's of the same like. He's of the same like. I guess uh, caliber. Uh, he's the same. Uh, yeah, he's like he's the same traits as like Colin Sexton and Jordan Clarkson. I, I do that same group of guys, and yeah. that's a fine guy off the bench. That's not a starter. Right. That's yeah, a fair criticism, but Chirk, to, I want to talk and ask you about Carl Anthony Towns. Why does he always look like an out of control truck that just runs over everybody? He can't play defense for some weird reason, but yeah, he. No, I'm talking about offensively because that's how he's like getting all his fouls in this series. It seems like just about every play. Oh, Carl Anthony Towns called for an offensive foul. Next Timberwolves possession. Oh, Carl Anthony Towns called for an offensive foul. Because he's a bum. <laughs> I don't think he's a bum. Oh, that's fantastic. You know, for those of you who and then followed it up with, I don't think he's a bum. <laughs> no, the guy's think... a three time All Star for a reason. Who the fuck gives a shit about an All Star uh, besides you, man? Sure, Nobody on a... earth other than you gives a shit about friggin' Oh, ice. like if you hear ESPN, they say that. The fuck yeah, ESPN? Because ESPN sucks. <laughs> They also just wake up and just yell things at each other, and it makes no sense. And yeah, I don't give a shit what the so-called worldwide leader says about pretty much anything. Mickey um, Mouse they, they, used to, they used to be good back in the day. Well, now Disney owns them. Mickey Mouse is running around there and like, like, making all the decisions. And uh, It's been good in almost half my lifetime, okay? Yeah, so it, 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 was, it was good back in the days when uh, – I thought First Take used to be good back First in the Take day. was always terrible. Even the, really even the show before first take, Cold Pizza was terrible. Okay. Yeah. Or or how about Chris Berman talking? Okay, about- cool. We get the little whoop noises. We get the you know him doing the circle of the wagons. Who cares about All Star games? I don't give a shit about All Star games. Um, what about what about All NBA Third Team? <laughs> care more about I, that. I, those those show, the, like those shows on ESPN. They're just not good. No, they're they're, they're, they're not. Why are we suddenly talking about ESPN? Because uh, a church starts talking about ESPN or something. Anyways, I don't know. Anyways, back to the conversation at hand. <laughs> I'll bring it back. The, All right. But I, uh, I think the great. I saw that John Morant dunk last night. That was amazing. It mm. was a nice dunk, but what? I don't get it with John Morant. He's been like all year. He was the one saying we want the smoke and look at us and all that. And yet, for half of the series, he hasn't shown up. And Turk just left. What the hell? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway. Uh... Uh, the, the Grizzlies are up 3-2. to two. I'm not going to be worried about anything. 
Yeah, um, he looks great. In my they're, 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 they're a team on the rise. This is what you expect out of a team. Hey, you're uh, back. Like the Grizzlies. Yeah, sorry, it's... technical difficulties there. All okay. Good. Yeah, Grizzlies should win this series. Yeah, Grizzlies I mean, could make a snakes, dark so, yeah. horse. Could be a dark horse. To Ooh. come out of the West? Yeah. No. No. I think Steph no. Curry, Steph, Clay, Draymond, I think the Warriors no. win that series. Yeah, I think I so, think too. So. Handle I it. Think, I think Jaws has got that hunger in him. I like what the – I like what the Grizzlies have. They have some nice pieces. They have John Morant, Desmond Bain, Stephen Adams, Jaron Jackson yes. Jr., Tyus Jones, Xavier Tillman. I Dylan like Brooks. Lot, Dylan Brooks. I like a lot of their players, and they're a nice story. Um, I think they're keeping a new trend in the NBA going that hopefully the Cavs can follow. Maybe not as well. Maybe not to the same extent the Grizzlies are doing it, but there seems to be a new trend in the NBA. I just wrote an article about that for the fan side, so I'll send that out. Um, but uh, I just don't think it's a good matchup for the Grizzlies against Golden State in the next round. I really don't. Yeah, the, the, the Western Conference is going to come down to two teams, the Suns and the Warriors. Everyone else doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. Come on. The health of Devin Booker is the biggest question mark right now, but – if he's back and he's healthy, that's the only team that can seriously contend with the Warriors in, in the West. I 100% agree with you. Mm-hmm. Some of these other teams are good. They got some great young players, but they're not ready yet. No. Not ready yet. It's no, they're not. Too early for them. Exactly. Um, John Morant's awesome. I love John Morant. He, I think he deserved the most improved player award. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, he's he's still super young, you know. He hasn't really proven anything yet, so. Right, I agree with you 100, percent Brian. He had, I'm by, like you said, I'm fine with him winning Most Improved Player. I mean, the Grizzlies went from being the number eight seed last season to the number two seed that in the West this season, so I'm fine with that. Yeah. But like you said, he hasn't proven anything yet. It could he be on the way to being a all-star, maybe even superstar caliber player? Sure, but I'm not ready to put that title on him yet. Mm-hmm. He just made an all-star. So what? You just said all-star caliber player. You said, so all-stars do matter, Josh. There's a slip of the tongue. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I'm, I'm not even entertaining out. this nonsense. Uh, okay. Wait. What other series do we have to get through here? The Bulls versus the Bucks. Bucks are gonna win Game Five tonight. It's not even a question. Zach Levine's out. Lonzo Ball is out. Yeah. This the series, is there. Put the Bulls out of their misery so we can get suicidal Big Cat and let's just go on and move on. Exactly. The Rosen had a good year this year. Okay. Cool. Uh, I don't give a shit. Just is- get this series over with. The longer it goes on, the longer that it, we have to deal with nonsense. Just knock right. the Bulls out. Let's get it over with. Okay. Yeah. The, and the, Golden they were State. a fraud all season long. Yeah, really. To an wow. extent, I, I mean, they they like a lot of people thought that they were like really going to compete to come out of the the East. I did. Oh yeah. no, oh, yeah. I thought they were. There was a, they were first when they were up there in the first place range for a while. Um, but that was the same time the Cavs were like a half game back of first place. So during that, 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 that time, people a lot of people were super high on them and thought that they were going to make a run at it, and I just thought. They were never that good. Yeah, I felt. I'm not saying they're not a good team. I, I'm just saying, like the hype that was way too high back then, just like it was on the Cavs. I and, understand you know, what you're saying, Chirk. Or, wow, I just had a Chirk moment. I understand what you're saying, Brian. I apologize, my dude. All good. I mean, you had a Chirk moment when you said the All Star game. You said All Star caliber player. You should have never said that out of the uh, yeah, yeah. I, the Warriors are up three one. Um. <laughs> Good segue, James. Good segue. Yeah, the Warriors are going to close it out against Denver tonight. I expect the yeah. Warriors to win in a blowout tonight. Uh, I, I mean, don't count out the Joker, though. Who gives a shit? He's done, too. Uh, yeah. End both of these series tonight. Let's move on. Let's they see what they Jamal play around to. Jamal Murray could have been helping him swept him. Whatever. Huh? Uh, how about this Jazz Mavericks series? This one's interesting. Yeah. 
uh, Dallas. I even if Dallas wins this series, as if Devin Booker is healthy, they're not going to beat the Suns. We already established that. But let me ask you this: If Devin Booker remains out, can Dallas? I'm not going to say win the series, but can Dallas make it interesting? Will they have Luca? Yes. Then yeah. Would you yeah, give Luka's Dallas a chance at winning the series if Phoenix doesn't have Devin Booker? Winning no, uh, making it go six or seven, sure, but winning no. Yeah, I, I think it could go seven games without Booker for sure, but I'd I'd still like them to win that series. Oh, we forgot one more game. Oh, Philadelphia, Toronto. Yeah. Can can Philly just end this over with? Toronto's not good. Like yeah. they're just fucking around with this shit. Like <laughs> Just, just move on. Let's get it over with. Knock out the Raptors. And I, I, I don't want to see Drake on my television anymore. Um, yeah. I hate to do. I say mean, this. I like the I like the Raptors fan though. The super fan. I, I think okay. the Raptors can pull this off. You know who I, I'm talking about, Drake? No. No, because it, it doesn't. It, here's what's going to happen. Okay, either in Game Six or Game Seven. Here's what's going to happen. Uh, MB and Harden are going to shoot a combined 45 free throws, and that's going to be the difference in the game. Okay, if it doesn't happen in game six and they only shoot like seven or eight between the two of them, guess what's happening in game seven? It's going to be nothing but foul calls. Dude, okay. If the Raptors are able to come back from a 3 0 series deficit to even force a game seven, the pressure dial is going to be turned up to at least a hundred on. James Harden and Doc Rivers. On Doc Rivers for sure. Oh yeah. yeah. I, I have more faith in this. This would be I more faith in the Sixers in Toronto. What are your guys' thoughts on Doc? Yeah. He's a guy. Yeah. yeah he's a I guy. mean, he, he, he did something the, once 15 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. He I mean, won a title like, in 2008. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I With an overpowered team. The re, a lot of the reason that this is happening is is I think has to do with him just failing to close in these situations. Like he's got a reputation of this, you know, I I, I think the Sixers win the series, but I I think that a lot of this is just like, I don't know, man, for whatever reason, he's just got this history of like choking in these big moments. And yeah, Yeah. no, I don't, I don't think that the Raptors are going to really make this. Like, I I don't think it's going seven. I think that they end it next game. No. I don't think Toronto lets the series end in shakes up in Toronto. Uh, just because Philly's coached by the NBA's version of Tom Mizzo, don't make you think <laughs> that the Toronto Raptors are actually going to make this go seven games. Hey, I picked the Raptors to win this <laughs> Mizzo, that's from a good the beginning. One, I'm not jumping off that bandwagon. Uh, fuck the Raptors. Let's keep going on. <laughs> it would be a story, though. Never has a team ever come down from a 3-0 deficit in the NBA playoffs. Wait. It would be a big deal. Yeah, so that. go Philly. Get Drake off my television. <laughs> the next, next topic, yeah. please. All right, so I'm all about less Drake. Less Drake is always good. So I think that's all the series. So let's talk some NBA awards. So we already touched on it. John Morant won Most Improved Player. I think we're we don't. None of us have any issue with it. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Nah, I got a little bit of an issue. What is it? You've chosen. What is- uh, Garland. Garland. Thank you. Now, was already an established star player last year. He, he just got better. You, you what do we know about Darius Garland coming this year? We didn't know much about Darius Garland. Yeah. He was yeah. the key centerpiece of a team expected to have 27 or fewer wins that made a run into the play-in tournament. That yeah. is what most improving players for. Not for some guy that's already an established guy that everyone already talks about. Nobody was talking about Darius Garland before this year. Yeah. That's a fair Everybody. point. I, I still, I would have picked Ja. I'm okay with Ja winning it just because I feel like he did get significantly better. Come on, um, Ryan. And they're in position. They're actually in the postseason right now. Like we we made the Mickey Mouse version of it. Yeah. Come so on, I, Brian. I think that that's why they gave him the edge at the end of the day. But there's definitely an argument for Darius Garland, and that's the only other player that I would even have in in the conversation. Or or Allen. Hmm. Allen, Jared Allen. No, I mean. It, it, no, he's he's still a center. He didn't play enough games either. You know, he's hurt for most of the Josh season. is frozen. Josh is frozen. Oh shit! 
Uh-oh. Uh, boy. So now it's getting, getting, now he's now it's getting that's real interesting. interesting. All, All right. right. Uh, what's the, the next NBA award? <laughs> who, who do you think is going to win? Do you think the East is going to win it this year? For what? The finals? <laughs> yes. What are we talking about? What? The, East gonna, the Eastern Conference as a whole? Are they going to win it? Yes. I, I think the Warriors are going to win it. But that's you don't just, think the East could do it? Not particularly. No, I'm not really excited by any of the teams in the East right now. How about the How about the Sixers? No, I mean the the way that they're struggling to close out the series with Toronto, I think, is or, speaks or a Celtics. little bit about them not being quite there yet. So, Celtics, I think too. Celtics look they like, they look good, but you know it's still like I don't know how much of that was on Brooklyn, you know, having just a real shitty situation with injuries and uh, everything else going on you know, with that organization, the lack yeah. of coaching and. Everything else, uh, it, to me, that was more of a, a failure on the Nets part than it was really like you, the Celtics blowing me away. You think this is uh, KD's karma? Karma? For what? You know. No, I don't know. <laughs> For, For what, joining the Warriors and yes. getting two bullshit titles and going out yes. in the zone and this doing karma shit? right now. This is karma. I think what this is telling you, if anything, about Mr. Kevin Durant and additionally Kyrie Irving is that give him, but this is fun. they need a very strong support staff around them. And yeah. They may or may not need to be the guy on their own team. Because mm-hmm. Steph Curry was the guy in Golden State. LeBron was the guy in Cleveland. 100%. Yeah. And just, Kyrie and KD have both uh, yeah. been in places where they're supposed to be the guy and they're not the guy. Yeah. So, didn't work out well when they tried. Yeah, even go back uh, to uh, Oklahoma City when Kevin Durant before he went to Golden State. He was yep. the guy, and he still didn't accomplish shit. Yeah. And he had Westbrook. And Harden. Yeah, Westbrook. Oh, yeah, for, for a little bit of that time. He mostly had a uh, – uh, It was mostly uh, Westbrook, but there was also Harden there and uh, Stephen Adams and, and uh, Harden, uh, Harden, Serge Ibaka. Serge right? Ibaka, yeah. Wasn't Harden sixth man of the year there? Yeah, he was for, for a season, and then he left, and then they got a. Uh, they had him for like three years. They traded him. I think they traded him for Kevin Martin. I remember it wasn't a good trade. Um, Kevin Martin or Kenyon Martin? Kevin, Kevin Martin. Martin, the guy Kevin. who had like the weird shooting form. You remember him, Brian? Vaguely. He he was like pretty good with the Kings, number twenty three. Anyways, uh, we wore a good number. Yeah. By the way, uh, three seasons for James Harden, Oklahoma City. So, anyway, uh, other award of note. Oh, Kendrick uh, Perkins was on the team. <laughs> Kendrick Perkins. Back Speaking of pool. Kendrick Perkins, does anyone else remember when uh, he just announced that he was coming back to the Cavs in 2018 and posted the picture of him in the New Jersey and there was no team announcement? Does uh, anyone else remember when that happened? Uh, no, yeah. I don't I'm remember so that. He posted a picture of him in, like, the red jersey posed like this, and it said, I'm back. <laughs> well, he they deleted excited. it like an hour later then he was never on the team <laughs> why was he never on the team because they never they never like activated him he was on like the yeah. G-League roster were, were you a fan of Kendrick Perkins James Kendrick Perkins was fine he was fun he, was he looked like he, like uh, if they need to get to a little uh, scrap that he'd be the first guy in to go fight everyone yeah, yeah. he was like a good uh, he was a good rim protector he was all right, but uh, other award of note, Rookie of the Year, Scotty Barnes. I'm fine with him winning it over he Adam. Also got this one wrong. He also got this one wrong. I know I'm going to sound like a homer, which I never sound like a homer, but Evan Mobley should have been Rookie of the Year. And if not Evan Mobley. In my opinion, it's the fact that we're not in the playoffs. That, that it, yeah, if not that. Evan Mobley, I would have said – uh, Kate Cunningham, but not Scotty Wait, Barnes. Would you this. say Jalen Green could have been in there too? No, Jalen Green, the guy the no. Rockets drafted. Mm-mm. No. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay with the pick again, but um, I I liked Mobley better in this instance. I'm okay with the pick, but I would have chose Mobley here. Yeah, I would have so, gone Mobley yeah. then Cunningham then Barnes. Mm. Yeah, I'm, a I'm all right. I like yeah. that that order a lot better. Yeah. yeah. Would I'm all right it? with Barnes winning it, but would, I would have preferred Mobley. Was Jalen Green a bad player? It said he averaged 17 points a game. He plays on a shit team. Who cares? Yeah, that's that's, that's what this is. 
You play yeah. on the Rockets. Yeah, they That's, were bad. It doesn't matter. It's about how you are as an individual player. No, that matters. What yeah. team you play on matters. Depends on where you end up in awards. Right. Mm-hmm. That's – that's a huge yeah, reason guess, why Cavs come up empty-handed here. Yeah, exactly. That's why Kevin Love's probably not going to win sixth man of the year. Not going to get sixth man. J.B. Bickerstaff's not going to get coach of the year. And he Kobe Altman's not going to get executive of the year, even though he you can make very valid arguments for every single Cavs player up for one of those awards should have won. Yeah. I don't even – J.B. Bickerstaff wasn't even one of the finalists for Coach of the Year. It was Monty Williams, Eric. And that, that means they got it wrong is what that means. Yeah. yeah. That means they got it wrong. It could be in the discussion. More yeah. like, I'm, I'm usually the one shooting all you guys down about this, but like, here's the deal. Like, they got it wrong if he's not even in this. It, yeah. like, there are legitimate reasons and valid arguments for the Cavs to have swept all of these awards. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think. Yeah, most thought, impressive. Huh? I, I was just going to say it's hands down the most impressive coaching performance of the year is Bickerstaff. That one I, I say he's been that easy. The fact he's not in the discussion is criminal. Yeah, I think yeah. If the finalists were Spolstra, Monty Williams, and I forget who the third one was. Yeah, they all they all can kick rocks. Should have been JB's award. It should have been. And. And, uh, so what's up next? Uh, it was Taylor Jenkins, Eric Spolstra, Monty Williams. Those are the three. Mm. 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 Anyway, so I think that's all the NBA stuff. Segways, this show. So <laughs> really smooth transitions and segues. We really are. Our show's so good. Yeah, I know. We are fantastic. <laughs> Is that Sarkin? <laughs> <laughs> We are good. Yay. Debatable. Today's performance <laughs> is debatable. Good Lord. We have stumbled through every transition. Okay. Uh, what do we have? We have baseball now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, it's it's baseball. Transition. So the Guardians swept the Chicago White Sox, and now they've lost four sh- – no, five straight. What the heck has happened to this team? It's it's a young team. They're inconsistent. From time to time, this is going to happen. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think the streakiness of this team, you know, the the lose a couple, win a few, lose a few, win a few, um, is really indicative of just being a young roster and a young team that you know they're they're going to be really hot and cold this year. I expect that to be a, a theme, and um, I, I don't think that this is any reason to kind of alarm or anything like that. Uh, sweeping the White Sox was huge. Gave us a little bit of a, a cushion for the next series. Um, but, yeah, I, I think that Yankees have a good team. We didn't play it great. Um, move on, you know. Yeah, and now we've lost the first two games against the Angels. I mean, they're, they're not hitting. That's just basically what it comes down to. They're not hitting right now. And Ice cold it, bats. It, it's, they're a streaky team. They're streaky at the plate for sure. Pitching usually is pretty consistent. But with, with young bats and, you know, going from – from New York where they got a pitcher that's obviously cheating. Then they got to go to Los Angeles and, and that's a, it's a big like time zone. Yeah. Thing. So, it, you know, with young team like this and a team that hasn't been consistent, either hitting, it's going to impact them. Yeah. 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 That's a really good point, James, the West coast trip and, and it being a young team. And I think that that definitely had an impact on them. Um, I was really hoping after that Yankees game and the way that it ended that, you know, we would come out and sweep the series against the angels, but you know, that's just being too optimistic. You know, it's a young team. And uh, like James said, you know, pitching is consistent. We can, you know, we probably can rely on that throughout the year, but the bats are going to be very hot and cold. And, you know, that's just because they're a young team, you know, a lot of, a lot of guys that need to get experience. And unfortunately the only way to do that is just time, you know? Yeah. Um, What did you guys think of, all the shenanigans that happened in the one game against the Yankees where they get the walk off and everything happened in the outfield. Well, that's just some bullshit behavior from the the fans in the Bronx. Uh, if you really want a, uh, a longer version of this discussion, I definitely recommend listening to uh, the latest episode of guarding the corner. Cause we, we talked about it for about a good 20 minutes or so. so. Yeah. We went at length about this particular incident. Yeah. So check that out. You know, all, all the usual places, Apple podcasts, Spotify, uh, 
<clears throat> SoundCloud, Stitcher, Google, Podchaser, tune in. This is BelieveOne.com. Check those out. You will find a link to that podcast on, through the This Is Believe One website in the description of this video afterwards. Perfect. I always yeah, the Yankees fans being one of the shittiest fan bases in the country, which is no <laughs> surprise. Um, and yeah, I mean, uh, they were going after a guy who, you know, was injured. And that's shitty to begin with. Uh, Miles Straw stuck up for his guy and uh, the walk off just happened to happen in the area that the incident had occurred. And it was just the perfect recipe for disaster. And it was ugly. It was really ugly. It was a bad look for the Yankees. Um, and if anything, I think that that is going to bring this, it brought this team closer together. And I think that uh, if anything, it's going to have a positive impact throughout the season, just seeing the way that those guys came together, you can tell they really care about each other. So that's a, you can't say enough about that in baseball. Mm-hmm. Big, big time, long-term, uh, returns on this one. Yeah. yeah. And speaking of the Yankees that we found out about a letter that was sent involving them. Anyone else want to comment on this before I, uh, before I commandeer this? Or? <laughs> Go for it. Go, for it. Go do, ahead and launch. Uh, do you want to know what we learned from this? We didn't learn anything from this. We already knew everything in this letter, okay? And it wasn't up to the level of some elaborate scheme like what the Astros did or what the Red Sox did with the Apple Watches. So in, in regards to shock value, in regards to you know the Astros fan base hoping for some, some big – aha moment where someone was doing something as elaborate or even more so than what they were doing. Like this was a big time, just who gives a shit. Yeah. That's yeah, how I, I interpreted it. I'm just I like, think this was all that big of a deal to be honest. Yeah. Um, At this point, it, it kind of felt expected. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, everybody's trying to get an edge, you know, that's been, it's been the story in baseball for all time. You know, guys are always looking at a way of getting an edge. You know, it's a game where numbers are critically important, you know, and yeah. guys are always going to look for ways to increase those numbers. And, you know, that's just part of what this is. It's just the the revelation of, you know, things that happen behind closed doors. And I think a lot more things like this happen than we know. We just never hear about it. So, yeah. Yeah, to I mean, me it wasn't all that shocking or anything like that. But. I mean, James, when we were here in studio at um, at All Sports Cleveland, didn't you like read out a series of tweets about a bunch of teams like cheating during their World Series runs, like the 2015 Royals and Adrian Beltre? Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. That was from uh, Ryan Stater on Twitter uh, at yeah, yeah. Stater. Uh, very good baseball account. But yeah, it's the the amount of teams that that or, you know, do cheat or have some sort of form of cheating. It's uh, most, if not all of them. So, like, when it comes to stuff like this coming out, don't be too quick to cast stones because they could come back and hit you in the face real quick. Like a lot of Yankees fans found out with this. But every team does what what the Yankees were doing. Goes to the replay room, watches the cycles of the signs, and tells the other teammates – Hey, when you're on second, this is the sign cycle. Let them know somehow that what pitch is coming. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's this just, has it, always happened. It's, it's happened since the beginning of time with baseball. Um, there, there's a reason why there's such a big push for pitch comp because it will completely eliminate this type of cheating from the equation. That's a very good point. Yeah. Yeah, having the pitch comp and not, not giving the other team an opportunity – to steal the signs is obviously a good way around it. And hopefully more teams adapt it. <laughs> the ones that have adapted it seem to be pretty happy with it. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then Pete Alonso got hit in the head again. Mets have been hit 18 times this year, seven more than any other team. At, at what point does it stop being just a coincidence? Let mm-hmm. me ask you that. Yeah. Yeah. Because, That's a good point. like, I get these new baseballs suck and pitchers are complaining because they can't control them. And, you know, they don't have the, um, let's call it assistance that they had last year when it came mm-hmm. to these balls. Because this is like the third or fourth consecutive year they've, they've messed with the baseball. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, the, the reviews on this particular ball are not good. Yeah. Okay? 
So home run problem. balls aren't carrying. There's a lot of issues with these balls. So they've they're they're dead balls. They're not live balls. They're dead balls. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we could see with home run numbers, like they're down big time. And that's, you know, overall net negative for the league. Like home runs are always a good thing. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, that guys are having issues with the ball offensively and from a pitching aspect as well. So, yeah, this is a storyline that I expect to uh, to continue in, until there's some kind of correction made or what have you. I agree with you. Um Speaking of pitching, though, I saw Walker Buehler had the first complete game shutout of the season. It did. Yeah, it took a couple of weeks before he had the first, you know, uh, CG shut piece. Mm-hmm. But, you know, Walker Buehler struck out 10, allowed just three hits, and a 4 to nothing win over the Diamondbacks. If there's any team to get a complete game shutout against, it is the Arizona Diamondbacks. Yes. Yeah. Or the Pittsburgh Pirates, right, actually. Not... Say that again? Or the Pittsburgh Pirates. Mm. Maybe. I mean, they are getting some some hits out of some guys. Daniel Vogelbach is actually being somewhat productive. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's kind of surprising. But, you know, they are with Brian Reynolds right now. So maybe, maybe it's the right time to go, you know, throw a no-no against them or something. I was looking into possibly going to a Pirates game tomorrow against Milwaukee. But we, uh, ended, up, we ended up not doing that. So. I'm just going to go to the Penguins game on Friday against Columbus. Yeah, not many people have been going to the Pirates games. So that's for certain. Uh, if, oh, if you were there, you would be one of the choice few. Um, and that's really too bad because it's a really great place to see a ball game. Like to anybody that hasn't been to PNC, it's amazing. Um, and Is you there know, a Cleveland rivalry that. there? No. no. No, there's not. No. Uh, no. Currently <laughs> – uh, the Pirates are averaging 13,000 a game, which is an increase over 3,000 a game from last year. But that number is sure to go down as they continue to play games. But they rank in dead last in the National League of attendance. Yeah, and, and a lot of those attendance numbers are even questionable. <laughs> the ones that are even... Oh, they've been juicing. They've been juicing the numbers is yeah. what they've been doing. Uh, the only thing I did find out, though, is that they count uh, all the uh, the suites and uh, club seats as sold, even oh. though if you don't go through there and go to the game. If, the, if it's uh. vacant, it counts as sold. So it counts as positive in regards to their numbers, which is why you saw some ridiculous like 10,000 count for like the Reds game the other day, and it looked like there was maybe 2,000 people there. Yeah. Or like, so you think like even the – Attendance count at the Oakland A's game where there was like three thousand fans. There was probably less than that. There was, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, and that happens a lot. You know, they count every single soul that walks through those doors. Every vendor, every you know, coach, player, any you know, (laughs) staff member, they all get counted into those numbers, and that's kind of how they juice them up and inflate them a little bit. So, Hmm. yeah, they weren't in the crowd. There wasn't that many in the stands. I know that much. Yeah. And, and then I saw the, some stupid tweet from like the the A's like president or GM uh, uh, taking a picture of the Giants game, and they had pretty they had decent attendance, especially for a weekday. Trying to call out uh, the Giants for no one showing up there, why no one's giving a shit? It's like don't don't be doing this. <laughs> don't be just trying to take shots at other teams because no one's coming to your games. Right. But, um, yeah. Yeah. After the Angels, the Guardians get to play at the Ring Central Coliseum in Oakland. I got it. A series against the A's is exactly what this team needs right now, honestly. Just play a shit team, get back on the right track, come back home, play the Padres for two, and get back to work. Yeah. Yeah, that's what they need to do. But uh, Browns, not Browns, NFL draft time. Let's talk about draft. Yeah. So, who do you think's going first overall? Uh, not Aiden Hutchinson. Um, no. I would say Trevon Walker. I'm going with uh, – right. <clears throat> what's his name? Uh, Kayvon Thibodeau is who I'm going with. Ooh. I'm actually going with the offensive lineman, Evan Neal. Evan Neal. Evan Neal. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going Trayvon Walker. Jacksonville wants to draft a 
Trevor Lawrence number one overall last year. They want to keep him standing upright so he can maybe develop into a solid NFL quarterback and put the Jaguars back on the map. Why not draft an offensive lineman to help protect him? So I'll give you a potential reason why. Because the Jaguars and Sam Robinson have agreed to a three-year, $54 million deal. Ooh. So that might be why they're not drafting a left tackle at number one overall. And they might be going the opposite side of the ball, defensive end. Mm. Okay. So, Brian, who do you think is going first? I said Kayvon Thibodeau. Uh, Chark, you said Trayvon Walker. Uh, uh, Chark said yeah. Evan Neal. God, it could be any of those guys. Um, I don't dislike any of those picks, um, but I think it's going to be a defensive end. Uh, I'm going to go Trayvon Walker. Okay. I did, I did find it interesting. None of us chose Aiden Hutchinson as mm-hmm. going number one overall. Yeah, the the, the arm length issue uh, yes, with that's GM, why. that's mm-hmm. why I stayed away from it um, because I think he really cares a lot about that. Um, he does. And because of that, I think that they're going to avoid Aiden Hutchinson. So that's why I didn't go with him at number one. Do you think he ends up going number two to the Detroit Lions then? If if Michigan Lions fan, that dynamic that exists, which is very real and prominent in southeastern Michigan, wants to be happy, they would love this pick. If they want their team to be good, they might not love this pick so much. Um, I think Aiden Hutchinson – can be a productive player in the league, but I don't think he's ever going to be a star player. Really? So I, think, I don't think he's going to be a star. I don't. I, I think he could be a productive player who plays like five to ten years, but after his rookie year, he bounces around a couple of years, maybe he finds a spot, he stays for a couple of years. Has like two or three Pro Bowls. I can't players. disagree more. I can't disagree more. Has I two or three Pro Bowls. I think he's a slam dunk uh, star. He's one of the rare – defensive ends that comes out with both production and the numbers like his his pro day his his numbers were incredible and he also had the production to back it up and he also had the success to back it up and finally beating ohio state and winning a big Ten. i and will say there, all three of those things and that's like there, right there, for, here's the concern i have with hutchinson it part of it is the arm thing okay i will admit part of it is the arm thing however it's the arm thing combined with he is a very stiff player he doesn't have a lot of bend and he doesn't have a lot of reach. So if you're a stiff player and you don't have enough reach to create separation between you and the blocker, it's going to be a little bit more difficult at the NFL level to be a, a consistently productive defensive end player. Yeah, I disagree. I think he had a great three cone time. And I, I think that that just, goes it's, it's not about that. It's not about the time. It's about how he actually plays. It's not about the time though. He plays stiff. I don't know. I, I, I watched a play all year long. He's he's the most slam dunk first round Michigan prospect that I have seen since Jake Long. So and he's that good in my opinion. I, I just disagree with you on this one. It's the rare instance where I disagree with you. <laughs> I, I think he's gonna be really good. And and he's he's also got durability, and that's something that a lot of other guys have had issues with too. Defensive ends coming out of the draft. So I, I think he's got it all. I think he's gonna be really good. Well um, I well, but I think the slam dunk at number two. There's no way that the Lions don't take him if he's there at number two. While I do agree with everything you just said, Brian, I think it does hinge on one thing, and that's the defensive system that he ends up in. I think, I like you said, I think he is a very productive player who can get to that star level. But I think, it, like I just said, I think it depends on – which defensive scheme he ends up in. If he ends up in the wrong defensive scheme or system, whatever word you want to use, he's not going to get to that level that you're projecting him to be at. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, it always has an impact, but as an end, it's not as important as like if he was a tackle, Um, you know, he's he's a pass rusher, you know, somebody they're going to use him as a pass rusher. So in, in that way, like, it's not as important, like I said, if he was a tackle. But, yeah, I agree. I mean, it's going to be important, the coaching staff that he lands with. Um, exactly. The players alongside of him. You know, he benefited from having uh, Ojabo on the other side of him. Oh, uh, Ojabo uh, was incredible for Michigan. Yeah, so he benefited from that in a big way. So, it, it, you know, you would want to see him land in a, a similar situation, in a similar defensive style. 
Um, but yeah, I, I just think he's one of those rare players that has it all, and I think he'll be good no matter where he goes. Yeah. So how about the quarterbacks? Because this draft is not like, a, oh my gosh, you have to select this quarterback type of draft. It's like, I mean, well, we don't know which Malik quarterback to go good. with. Huh? What did you say, Trent? Malik Willis looks pretty good. Do you think he's going to be the first quarterback selected? Yeah. So, and which team takes him? Uh, maybe the Browns. Browns? <laughs> the Browns? <laughs> We've got three quarterbacks. We actually have four right now. We've got one we need to get rid of. Uh, I don't know if yeah. it's a first-round quarterback. It, I, this draft reminds me a lot of the 2013 NFL draft where it's <laughs> there's not any superstar players in it. And it, there's certainly none of them are quarterbacks. And you end up taking players and it just kind of sucks. Like EJ Manuel? EJ Manuel. He's from that draft. Geno yeah. Smith. I mean, that, that draft wasn't good. Yeah, it wasn't. <laughs> That's what this <laughs> draft reminds me a lot of. There's, there's, you can probably get a lot of like productive type players out of this, but they're going to be like in that second, third tier player group. There's very few guys, if any, that in the are going to be superstar franchise talent players in this draft. Yeah, I agree with that for the most part. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, um, yeah. But who do you guys think is going to be the first quarterback taken and what team? I agree that it'll be Malik Willis. Uh, I honestly don't know what team. Uh, I'd have to pull up the order now. So yeah. They'll all circle back to me. But I agree with Turk. I think Malik Willis gets taken first. So the team I'm looking at is num the number six team, Carolina. They, they're clearly not sold on Sam Darnold. Matt Rule knows he's on his last legs as the Panthers head coach, so he wants a quarterback. I wouldn't be surprised if they take – Kenny Pickett at number six, honestly. Really? Ooh. That's spicy. Yeah, I would not be surprised. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's spicy. I don't like Pickett. I avoid him like the plague. <laughs> I, I think that the, the, the hand size issue is, is a bigger issue than people uh, want to give credit to. And also because it's been highlighted by turnovers. You know, he's had an issue with fumbling. Um, so if you've got both those, if you've got the small hands and you also are prone to fumbling, um, that's not good. So uh, for that reason, I think that I don't think that anybody would risk going top 10 for him. I really don't. I'm not saying it's the right decision. I'm just saying I think that's what the Panthers will do anyway. Right. Yeah, I get what you're saying there. Yeah. It's not like you're saying that's the right pick. I, Correct. I yeah. I think a lot of people are – putting Malik Willis at number 20 to the Steelers. I think if Pittsburgh wants Malik Willis, they're going to have to trade up. I don't think they're going to have to trade up. No one's really, you know, trying to get up, you know, get out of each other's way and get ahead of someone for a quarterback in this draft. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I really do think Malik Willis could be the first guy off at 20 for the Steelers. Mm. Like, you usually in draft process, you see quarterbacks get pushed all the way to the top of the of the draft. We're seeing the complete opposite. We're seeing the complete opposite in this draft. They're pushing them down. Okay, and, and teams have shown that they're not valuing these quarterbacks at all. I saw right. someone say if he was in this draft, Baker Mayfield would be the best quarterback prospect. That another one here, current version of Baker Mayfield, flaws and all. That's not saying much. I heard the same thing about Davis Mills. Someone said Davis Mills would be the best coming out of this draft, too. So that's no, one's, a lot no one's really excited about this quarterback draft. It's a, it's a draft where you, if you have to take a quarterback, don't do it in round one. Um, yeah. Take a second round flyer on somebody uh, and, and hope they, they turn into something. Yeah. From a cap standpoint, though, like getting a quarterback in the draft is the cheapest way to get a quarterback, you know. So I think that for that reason, like Josh, like you were saying, I think that a team will take a quarterback too high. I don't know if it'll be Carolina at that location, but somebody will. They'll take a quarterback too high. And part of the reason is because they're going to go, oh, well, you know what? This is an affordable option. 
Yeah. Um, so even though we're not crazy about this guy, you know, it, it is what it is. But I think they're looking at those guys as placeholders, though. I don't think they're looking at any of these quarterbacks as starting quarterback caliber. Like, uh, I find a team that's looking for a backup to be the team really that's best suited to draft one of these guys because I think that they're backup caliber players. Interesting. So you I look at the top half of this draft. Most of these teams have a quarterback or at least are in some sort of weird – have to make a decision after this season, so they have to play the guy type situation. Mm-hmm. Like the Jaguars just drafted Trevor Lawrence. Okay, yep. uh, you know the Lions. They have Jared Goff, as horrible as expensive as he is. Texans got Davis Mills. The Jets have Zach Wilson. They drafted last year. The Giants. They have Daniel Jones, and however they handle that situation is <laughs> yet to be known. The Panthers have Darnold, and who knows what they're going to do there. But a lot of people do not think they're taking a quarterback at six. Mm-hmm. Then you got the Giants again, and you got the Falcons. Not the Falcons do something weird. Yeah, but they just signed Marcus Mariota. You want him to be successful. You want this offense to be successful. You find another guy to catch passes along with Kyle Pitts. Yeah. So quarterback, kind of out of the question there. Seattle seems pretty happy with Drew Locke and Teddy Bridgewater because Seattle's weird right now. Apparently, then yeah. you got the Jets again. Then you got the Commanders who took Carson Wentz, and the Vikings have Kirk Cousins. I, I, right. I think this might be a draft where we see teams just taking the best available player more, yeah. more so than fit because it's a draft that it's not, you know, it's not a stellar draft class. So like, I think that a lot of teams are going to go, you know what, instead of going by positional need, let's just get the best player because some of these guys are just not going to be impactful players in this league. So that's a fair, that's a fair, that's a fair way of way of uh, fair way of looking at it. And I, I actually agree with you. Um, I think that if Malik Willis does end up going to Pittsburgh, that's a perfect fit. Him and Mike Tomlin, I think, would work together beautifully. Tomlin can work great with anybody. But, yeah, yeah. I, I think yeah. It, it does seem like the most logical fit. It really does. They need, you know, they need another quarterback. Um, he's a guy that, that seems like he can fit right into that, you know, that style. Obviously, they're going to adapt their offense a little bit because Roethlisberger is not going to be the guy driving, the, you know, steering the ship anymore. Um, so I'm sure there will be some evolution in their offense. Right. Um, and, and I think he's a guy that probably fits what Tomlin's going to try to do. So, yeah, yeah. that would be a good spot for him. Uh, you know, the best type of fit for Willis is, a, is an RPO, QB run heavy style offense. Yeah. Guess what? The Steelers have no problem with running even when they tried running it with, you know, old man Roethlisberger who couldn't run anymore. That exact same description. Yeah. You know, shallow passes, deep balls. That's all the Steelers ran. That's what mm-hmm. Willis is best at. Yeah. That's yeah. a good point. That's a very good point. Uh, yeah. I just really don't like Pickett, you know. Uh, I'm glad that nobody said Pickett to Pitt because of the Pitt, you know, him being a Pitt quarterback. Yeah. I, I, I don't think they fall into that trap. but Right. I really think the pick is – he's a dangerous pick. Yeah. Uh, I like, really do. I'm looking at what you really said bad. on the switch sheet right now. Player most likely to be overdrafted, James. And I think, yeah. it's, and I think it's Kenny Pickett to the Carolina Panthers at number six. Because, again, about Panthers, I don't think the Panthers are satisfied with Sam Darnold. Matt Rule knows he's on his last leg. So, they're just going to be like, let's reach for a quarterback. Hey, Kenny Pickett. <laughs> It'll be awful. I don't think he'll get drafted that high. I think I think the Lions could do something very stupid because it's the Lions. They have picks 32 and 34. If they see a team that's looking to reload on current draft picks and future draft picks, they could do something stupid like trade up from 32 with, you know, a team that needs some draft capital. Mm-hmm for a long-term build and end up taking picket. Yeah, I agree. I, I can see that. that. 100%. Yeah, I can see that. 34 and, you know, you send that to, I don't know, the, the Eagles or something. Yeah. Yeah. Wait. I think that the, there's a real chance that somebody might take Sauce Gardner top five, and I think that'd be a mistake. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I think there's a real chance that somebody will reach on him. 
Um, I'm not saying he's going to be a bad player, but I think that in terms of player most likely to be overdrafted, I think he's a guy that is one. He'll probably go really high in this draft, and I don't necessarily think that he's deserving of that, to be fair. So what you're saying is the Texans are going to draft Sauce Gardner to drop into their cover two defense. This is my Kyle Pitts pick this year. I, I honestly think that number three, the Houston Texans are going to take Sauce Gardner. Got to love that Lovey Smith Tampa two. They still trot now 15 years if it stopped being able to be ran in the league. Yep. Yeah. But I'm crazy wow. about this. I'm crazy about this pick. If you want to put money on any of these picks in the first round, Sauce Gardner at number three has some great value. Um, I really think there's a real possibility that happens. I, Texas, Lovey Smith running the Tampa two. Yep, you got it. <laughs> you know, you missed, you missed Lovey Smith, James. For the same reason I said that the Jags won't go with Hutchinson because of the arm issue. It's the same thing, you know. You, you got to know. You got to know. They're, they're kind of Whose dog is that? Even Brian's oh, dog. God. Even Brian's dog agrees with what we're saying. He, he gave us a here we go brownies. Yes, that, that's what we got. Hey, speaking of the. Br- Hey, speaking of the Browns, their first pick is until the second round. So, so they get a quarterback? No. Yeah. Would that be funny, James? Uh, uh, listen, I've made tons of you know wisecracks about you know the the Browns front office and their Ivy League uh, history, and you know when they do something I think is stupid and actually is stupid, I'll criticize it and follow it up with, but I'm not an Ivy Leaguer. But yeah. uh, even at their worst day, uh, they would not be taking a quarterback at 44 in this draft. I agree. Yeah, I agree. I, agree. I think I mean, this is going to be a best available, whether it's a wide receiver or uh, a defensive lineman. Yeah. Well, that's that's, that's really what's going to be. Yeah, that's I what think, I think happens at 44. Yeah, I think for me, they need to go wide receiver with their first pick. I would probably go defensive end, honestly. I, I see a lot of people going and saying they should uh, get the uh, the Pickens guy, but he's been described as a, a boomer bust prospect type guy and more likely bust than boom. And for a team that needs production out of the wide receiver position. I've heard big maturity issues with him. Uh, locker yeah. room issues. And that's something when you're trying to get rid of a guy like Baker Mayfield, you don't want someone to be brought in who's going to have issues like that, and he seems like that type of guy. Um, I disagree on going wide receiver here, Josh, because I think that the, the wide receiver class is very top-heavy. I think that like the first couple of guys that are going to go are going to be special, and then I think the rest of them I'm not that crazy about. Um, so that's why I think that probably defensive um, defensive line is where we're going to try to fill first in that area. That's a fair point. Um, I think day two wide receiver or day three wide receiver is probably more likely. They, yeah. they still need a defensive end opposite Miles Garrett. Like yeah. as much as people are being like, "Oh, they're gonna bring back Clowney back," they still haven't. Like he's still they still haven't signed him. Right. You're right. right. Same goes yeah. for Jarvis Landry too. Like they still haven't resigned him either. But like I feel more confident in getting a productive uh, player for this year and beyond at 44 with the defensive end than I do a wide receiver. Yeah. I understand. I do understand that, James, and I also get what you're saying, Brian. I just feel like, for me, wide receiver is a little bit of a bigger need only because, like, Amari Cooper is a good receiver, but I would say he's a number two wide receiver. None of us think Donovan Peoples-Jones is a number one wide receiver. He's probably, if not a number two wide receiver, probably number three. And I don't think any of us are, okay, four. And I don't think any of us are sold on Anthony Schwartz. Mm -hmm. Um, So I just feel like wide receiver is a pretty big need for us. But I do do agree that this wide receiver draft class is top heavy. So you need need to look at it from team need. You need to look at it from what picks the Browns have. You need to look at it for depth of position group in the in the draft class. I feel like like what Brian said, it's top heavy, but the, the wide receiver group, it drops off. I mm-hmm. feel that you're gonna get a, a quality, more quality player, more impact player, something closer to resembling a blue chip player at defensive line at 44 versus wide receiver. 
Uh-huh. Okay. They're still going to draft a wide receiver at some point. Right. But you know, I wouldn't back myself into the corner there because they still have picks 78 and 79 in day two. So they have two other picks besides 44 in day two. Okay. Do you think there's a possibility the Browns could move up in the draft? From if there's someone that's available that has no business being available, like JOK was last year, sure. Yeah. Use uh, use the 78 or 99th pick, move up from 44 to like 39 or something. Right. Yeah, but I think that's possible. I definitely think that's possible. But you don't think there's a possibility that like they move up into the first round to draft? No, it's impossible. They don't have enough to get there. Yeah, I agree. Without giving up future first round picks, they don't have enough for, enough stuff to get there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think James is right there. I yeah, because they, they, yeah. they have the two, two threes, a four, six, and two sevens. Yeah. Oh, uh, and just to, to contrast something real quick, I was one of the people that said that DPJ was going to be the most likely to be overdrafted in that draft. I think he was way overdrafted. And he was um, drafted in the sixth round. <laughs> yeah. And that's uh so, yeah. yeah, I'm not just homering on Aiden Hutchinson. I really do think he's that good. Yeah, um, I thought but, DPJ was way overrated as a prospect coming out of college. You get a big oh, thumbs oh. up, Brian. I want to see you over Michigan. What? You heard me. Okay. <laughs> anyway, I want to see you over Michigan. I said. Oh. Mm. I don't know. Oh. It's been a while. He didn't want me to go there, though. All right. Yeah, let's move on. Yeah. So we kind of touched on this with the Browns, but do you think there are going to be any teams that trade back into the first round? Maybe to draft the quarterback, maybe just to draft somebody else. The Panthers, maybe? Let me look at the, the, the top end of round two, because that will give you the answer here. Uh, I could see the Jets being unnecessarily aggressive for no reason besides that they're the Jets. Yeah. Um, the Seahawks do have picks 40 and 41, so I could see them getting weird and getting some action in there. Teams like to, to drop back to get additional picks, especially in this draft, that they can turn one pick into two picks this draft. They'll do that. So I could see some team doing something stupid. Like maybe Seattle uh, didn't love taking a quarterback earlier in this draft, but let's say – for some reason, Malik Willis is still available at 26. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could see them trading up to get someone like him. Or or maybe they really love themselves in Desmond Ritter for some reason. And he's or, available at 32, and he they, they trade with the Lions. Right. Yeah, there's, there's, there's guys in this draft that I think that certain teams are really fond of, that if they fall, that's probably how it'll happen. But, like, trying to predict trades in a mock draft – it's, it's, I hate it. I, so, I really do. It's it's a really hard thing to predict. Uh, this is a yes or no question for me, and I think the answer is probably yes. Somebody will. Uh, yeah. It happens every year, you know. Yeah. So I, I do think that somebody will probably trade back. Somebody will trade up, and we'll see something like that happen. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, I could see the Seahawks doing that, trading back up to get Desmond Ritter. I think it's interesting that like. Yeah, I, like we talked about how the this quarterback draft class is not very strong. It's interesting, like the only two quarterbacks you hear really being talked about at all are Kenny Pickett and Malik Willis. Like you don't hear anything about Desmond Ritter, at least I haven't, and I haven't really heard anything about Matt Corral either. Sam Howell, Carson Strong, those guys. Yeah. You hear those guys mentioned as later round picks. I mean, Pickett and Willis are the only guys that are really have any chance of going in the first round. Yeah. And yeah. more than likely both will. But like Corral, Strong, Ritter, you know, uh, Howell, they're, 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 they're not first round guys. They're day two, day three guys. Yeah, I agree. It's, I agree 100%. I, I think that. Uh, the over under is at three for quarterbacks taken in the first round. I've got the under. I think that the two you mentioned go in the first round. Uh, I don't think either of them should go in the first round, but they will. Mm-hmm. Um, but I can't see anybody taking Howell or Ritter, or Coral, or any of those guys. Um, yeah, first round. I, I just, right. That'd be way reachy. Yeah. By no means am I suggesting that any of those quarterbacks should be taken in the first round. 
I'm just saying I think it's interesting that it's only Pickett and Willis being talked about as first round quarterbacks. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's how questions work. You ask. Them. I know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so the Browns have announced their new radio broadcast team. It's gonna be Jim Donovan, Nathan Zagur, and Gerard Cherry. Yeah, this impacts me zero percent because I watch the games on television, not via you know, to listen to them on the radio. Same here. I, I just I've never listened to a Browns game on the radio unless it was a necessity. So yeah, good for I, them. I listen to the Browns radio, huh? I I used to listen to that all the time. Ninety two three. No, not that the the, the no. tele the radio broadcast. The, the actual oh. telecast of the game. You watch it on TV. You don't listen to the radio, right? I've heard of it. I've, I've done heard, both. Yeah, I've heard sometimes where like people will like watch the game but turn off the sound and listen to the radio broadcast. That's just psycho shit. And that is. That's a pain in the ass because the homers, guys. You guys don't understand. Well, okay, here's the problem. Lining up the radio broadcast with your television feed is a giant chore that I just find unnecessary. Okay, I don't do that, but sometimes I prefer listening to the radio over the so, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm watching the broadcast. I want to watch the broadcast. I don't want to have to listen to a, a radio broadcast, which is also not coinciding timing-wise with what I'm watching. He, he's up. cheering okay. the Browns on, which I makes it better. I want to watch better. what's happening in real time. There's a reason oh. I don't watch – games later and record them if i if it happened and i missed it i missed it okay i don't like the yeah. games. i'm not I gonna go watch if i'm out all day and the guardians play at one i don't get home until five i'm not gonna just start the game from the beginning i'll be like oh did they win or lose how'd they score how didn't they score the end mm -hmm. yeah i mean i don't like tebowing it tebowing right tebowing a game tebowing that's a quarterback who played for the floor no 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 like how you... you're talking about TiVo. TiVo. I, yeah. I don't know. If people still have TiVo. <laughs> oh, I do. How is it uh, in that time machine you call 2004? Yeah, that's what TiVo was. I mean, I dude, I still DVR games, but he specifically mentioned TiVo. Yeah, TiVo. That's different. Yeah, yeah, that's a, yeah. <laughs> a subscription service. You had to go and buy and get activated. Right. How, everyone um, still remembers it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I worked at Best Buy at the time, towards the like the towards the death of TiVo. Okay, yeah. <laughs> we bought TiVo. Like but I have TV, like, but I'm not going to go to Radio Shack to get a new one. Right, that's Dude, what I mean. It's the wait, same wait, situation. Wait, Radio <laughs> Shack is still in business? Yeah. No, no, it's not. not. It's not. I think it that is. That's my point: is that it's also something that's no longer relevant. Yeah. <laughs> so you don't want to go to TiVo? <laughs> the one thing no. you said though, Turk, was that some people want to listen to the radio because they want the homerism, but you get that on the television broadcast. No, show. you don't. Yes, no, you, you don't. Do. You, you get, get, rich, and, you get rich Homer. Oh no, yeah. most of our games are locally televised. Like we still get our local No, broadcast. we don't get the guys. If, dude, if Troy Aikman is calling a Cowboys game, he's gonna heavily favor the Cowboys. If you if it's Jim Nance and Tony Romo calling a Dallas Cowboys game, <clears throat> Romo's gonna be all in favor of the Cowboys. That's just what happens. What about Tivo? Jesus. What about Tivo? Jesus Christ. <laughs> anyway, sticking with the Browns. So we kind of touched on this, so I don't know if you want to extend on this, but if you were the Browns GM, so let's say you're Andrew Barry. What would you do in this draft? Defensive end and wide receiver. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Defensive, yeah. defensive tackle at or least defense. once. Yeah. How about uh, linebacker. Fill your needs and then the rest go best available. That's yeah. that's what I say. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, All right. Yeah, defensive tackle, defensive end, wide receiver. Then at that moment in time, best player available on your board. If yep. that's yeah. a punter, let it be you know the punt god or the hell his name is. Yeah. Oh yeah. What's yeah. His name? So, Going to the Carolina Panthers, it looks like they are unlikely to trade for Baker Mayfield in during the first half of the draft, and they've informed Sam Darnold that they may draft a quarterback. The, the Panthers are a fucking mess, okay? Right. Let's be real here. Matt Rule was not the guy everyone thought Matt Rule was. That was never a big Matt Rule guy to begin with, okay? But uh, it's been a train wreck in Carolina during the oh, entire time he's been there. 
Like yeah. Yeah. some of that's not his fault. Like Carolina and like the county where they're building their new training facility had a little falling out. Now it's just going to sit there as abandoned half built architecture. It's just going to just kind of sit there and disappear like the Soviet monuments of yesteryear. So <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> that's what's, it's just sit there and rot. Yeah. But that's besides the point, but it's, the Panthers have to do something at quarterback. Like Matt Rule, you're like you are the hot seat. You're on it. You are the hot seat. <laughs> I agree. I mean, the fact that they're not interested in Baker Mayfield speaks volumes because of all the teams that would do something like that. They're one of them. Um, but yeah, you know they're interested in in drafting a quarterback in a very weak draft class over trading for Baker. So and also over right. keeping Sam Darnold. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Why are they keeping him? Maybe the Browns should get him. No, no. You're a yeah. quarterback. Stop with the quarterbacks. They, to they the have the starter. Top. They have the backup. They have the third string. Okay, all, right. all three. We're good there. You guys yeah, make it sound like a like a like a really like a, I don't know. It's like disgusting hearing another quarterback on the Browns. Hey, the Browns don't need a quarterback. The yeah. got three of them. They don't need any more. That's all we're saying. I feel so why would you draft? Very people? strange saying that sentence. Very. The Browns would do something like that. The old Browns would. The old Browns would not not this iteration. No. Okay, and I, I, I'm saying that as someone who's always skeptical of everything that this Browns organization does and all of the, you know, uh, praise they get on a nonstop basis from certain individuals that I do not care for. Right. But, anyways, Panthers. Yeah. eager to trade for Baker Mayfield, though, to answer the question, like yeah, you know, but. <laughs> I know, I, moving on to the Seahawks part, the Seahawks don't seem to want him. No, yeah, not no. one bit. Not it's, at all. I mean, but like nobody wants him. Nobody wants him. I mean, there was there was rumors of Kaepernick going to Seattle that had more more legs to them than Baker going there. Oh, um, yeah. So it, it's just I don't know. We're gonna be lucky to get anything for him. At, at this, this point, point, we'd be lucky to get a washing machine for Baker Mayfield. The only way that they're going to get something is that they eat some of the contract, okay? They're going to have to. They're going to have to. Nobody's going to pick up that contract. They're going to have to eat a, a significant portion of it to, to, to mm-hmm. move him because nobody wants to pay him $18 million. So Baker? Like, yeah, Baker. And, like – I was never big on paying him $18 million for this potential season in the first place when they picked up his fifth year option. So, right. and that was after he came off a good season. So. Yeah. He's a guy that's going to be ready for a new contract. Like a, it's just a bad situation. Nobody, nobody's going to want to bring him in um, for a multitude of reasons. And that's what we're seeing. Think. What? The Browns might. The no, they're not. Uh, no. They we moved on. We have a quarterback. Sorry. We have three of them. Sure. Is your mind like back in 2019 or something? You do know Deshaun Watson's our quarterback, right? I do, do but that? I sometimes still, I'm still like have some Bakerism still in me. That I still need to get rid of. What you? Oh, you still think Baker's good? Maybe not good, but it's possible he could make it. No, he's not. I've been telling <laughs> you he's not for a year, sure. It, yeah. It's 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 gone heavily in my direction of, of the who's right versus who's wrong meter. I, I know it has, but he could use this as motivation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my, motivated my, my criticism is motivation. Jeff Fisher, the Michigan Panthers of the USFL. That's where he'll find his motivation. Yes. Yeah. James, if this is the right versus wrong meter, it's like this. Whoop. <laughs> Yeah, I think that Baker's future lies in a different league. He, he's perfect for fan-controlled football. Oh, man. Imagine, imagine Johnny Manziel on one sideline, Baker Mayfield on the other. Dream they, they somehow make it so Terrell Owens is all-time wide receiver one. Yep. <laughs> yeah, he's going to end up playing for one of these other leagues. And He'll play with Josh Gordon? Maybe. I think Josh, Josh Gordon's Gordon is still NFL eligible. He could sign yeah, with an NFL team. Right. That I think he might too, honestly. Like guys are guys are just willing to take chances on on people with the build of Josh Gordon. He's yeah. just a free did, specimen. Yeah. Gordon didn't play at all last year, did he? I think he played for Kansas City. Yeah, he played for Kansas City. 
I know he was on a roster. I don't remember him playing too much, though, if he did. You missed Josh Gordon on the Browns? No. No. Oh, he uh, he played in – Played with the Kansas State Chiefs. Yeah, he played seven seven starts, 12 games. Oh, that was a very forgettable. Uh, five catches for 32 yards. That's why I forgot he played more. <laughs> One touchdown. Damn. He's averaging a whole seven yeah. yards reception. That's amazing. 6.4. 6.4. Even less than 7. Even less. Yeah. That's so bad. That is so bad. Especially for a guy that, quote unquote, to, to average those numbers is terrible. I mean, oh, he, 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 played, he played in fan control football last year. Yeah, him and Johnny. Yeah. Man, you think yeah. Baker could do well? And, uh, yeah, Baker will do great in fan controlled football. He's he'd be one of the better quarterbacks over there, that's for sure. Yeah, he can go play for the Zappers or the hell that Josh Gordon played for. Yeah, the Zappers, Blazer boys. Was was like Johnny Manziel even good in that league? No, no, no. He sucked. <laughs> he quit. He sucked play. in that league. He, yeah, he was terrible. He was bad in that league, <laughs> like, and he quit in the middle of the game too. He fumbled a snap, and there was a guy coming up to tackle him, and he literally threw his hands up like this and turned and walked away and quit and never played another down for the thing yeah. that year. He Why does that feel so right for him? And then every start of the new fan-controlled football season, they say Johnny's coming back, and then he just doesn't show up. And then they make up some new injury about why he's not playing. But that's oh, really? what he's done. He's still potential. He, they're still marketing him like he's the face of the freaking league. Yeah. He doesn't play. Oh well, it's God. it's down between him or fifty-one-year-old Terrell Owens. So right, exactly. Terrell, he's playing. Yeah. Wow. The quarterback play in the USFL has been dreadful. So I'm sure that, like I said, Jeff Fisher, Michigan Panthers, they'd love to have a guy. Well, like who's him. he got to beat out at Michigan uh, or in Michigan? Or- Ray Patterson, who already got benched in his first game in the USFL. All right. Uh, and then yeah. I can't remember the name of their other guy. You think hey, T.O. Hey, I'm a, I'm a, I don't freaking know. Should T.O. make an NFL comeback? No. 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 Paxton Lynch. Paxton Lynch? Lynch. You got Bench oh. for Paxton Lynch? Oh. <laughs> I didn't know it was for Paxton. And he was another bust in the NFL, too. Oh, my God. Ugh. I'm he looking was at this roster. There, there are a couple names on this roster I recognize. Uh, most notably, Marcus Baugh, formerly of the Ohio State University, tight end. Mm. Do you miss uh, Davion Smith, uh, who played for the University of Michigan, getting uh, cut by the Pittsburgh iteration of their <laughs> XFL or USFL team? Oh, the Pittsburgh Baller. He, he chose pizza <laughs> instead of salad, and I said, "We don't want anybody that's going to choose a pizza over a salad." Not. <laughs> Get him out of here. Yeah. So, yeah, that was with the kicked him out of Pittsburgh, so he's looking for a job. Sorry, Davion. Shout out to my guy. Uh Howland High School standout. Shout out. Yeah, that was with the Pittsburgh Maulers. Yeah. What a joke. What a fucking <laughs> joke. You don't like the team name? Uh, not the team name. I'm saying that the whole that whole story is just ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. The team name sounds corny. Yeah, they're all corny. <laughs> yeah. There's only so many good team names available. Uh, like, yeah. I, and I, is such a generic one, though. Yeah. Did you look at the rest of that 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 league? They have ridiculous <laughs> names. The Houston Gamblers. Oh my god. Uh, not the Las Vegas Gamblers. Um, no. uh, the Birmingham Stallions, the Houston Gamblers, the New Orleans Breakers, yeah. Tampa Bay Bandits, Michigan uh, Panthers, New Jersey Generals, Philadelphia Stars, and Pittsburgh Maulers. When are we gonna get the Denver Gold? When are they gonna make an appearance? <laughs> I like Bandits. I, I like Bandits. That not bad. Bandits, an okay name. How do some fun stuff with that? The, the logo for the New Orleans Breakers is just a giant wave. That's what it. That's what it was back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> like the Tulane Green Wave down there in New Orleans. Yes. Yeah. Shout out to Tulane Green Wave. I think Didn't we think need they a, would make an appearance in this week's episode. I think Justin Gilbert's playing in that league, the fan controlled league. I, I don't know he's done anything regarding <laughs> he didn't close the football. Talk about a guy that got drafted too high. If he my god. Would he join this podcast? I wouldn't have him. <laughs> you there's, have there's, him. A, there's a better chance of him of him joining this podcast than there is of him playing another down in the NFL version. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
I agree with you <laughs> on that. Have you heard anything about Justin Gilbert since the Browns cut him? <laughs> and I thought he got traded to the Steelers. He did. Oh, whatever. He got traded to the Steelers for a 2018 six-rounder. Okay. Every defensive back we draft, we trade to the Steelers. So I don't, I don't know why. That's what we do. We draft DBs. And we Not TJ Ward. No, he ended up going to Denver. Yeah. But Denver's another spot they always go to, too. Seems like we have a good business relationship with each team. Speaking well, if they're of going there, we backs, don't have a good business relationship with them. If they're going to Denver. Or mm-hmm. Pittsburgh. I mean, Pittsburgh's a rival. Why do we have a good business relationship with them? We, we don't. For the longest time, there was this kind of circle of death you could circle on the uh, on the uh, NFL roster transaction, and it involved the following three teams. The Cleveland Browns, the Detroit Lions, and the Oakland Raiders. Those three teams would trade the same players between them, whether they actually traded them, sign, release, sign, release, sign, release. But if you look at this, this amount of players that played for those three franchises from like 2002 to 2017 – you would Remarkable. stop counting at like a hundred. Yeah. The Broncos were with the Browns for a while too. Huh? Are you talking about that like that minute in like the mid two thousands where half our defensive line went to Denver because the mm. the Broncos hired the old Brown defensive line coach? Yeah, that's what happened when they had Courtney <laughs> Brown and Kennard Lang. Gerard and, Warren. Uh, uh, what was that? They had Gerard Warren. Yeah, Gerard Warren too. Big, big money. Big waste of money is what he was. You miss him. Like, you do remember him, Brian? Oh yeah, I remember him. Yeah, that, didn't did Warren win a Super Bowl with the Patriots? I know he went to the Patriots. I, I think, think he sure. might have. I'm not I sure. Think he might have. I wouldn't be surprised. And then T.J. Ward too. No, he didn't. He was on what he was on 2010, 2011 New England. They did not win the Super Bowl in either of those years. Poor, poor, poor money. What do you guys think about Kyle Hamilton in this draft? I was going to ask it about him earlier. He's good. Uh, I think a lot of uh, – this reminds me of – I don't know if you guys remember this guy. You remember Zibikowski? Tom Zibikowski. Okay. Tom Zibikowski. It, it, this feels very Zibikowski-esque. Like, did he have an awesome career at Notre Dame? Yes. Like, does he have the measurables? Yes. But, like, I don't know. I Just something about it. I, I, just, I just don't think it's as much of a slam dunk at the safety position as people think he is. I'll just say that. Yeah. I think I think he's another player that teams are probably going to reach to take. I wouldn't mm-hmm. be surprised if they take it overall because it's the Jets. I wouldn't be surprised by that either. You don't think the Jets are – the Jets is the Jets. Jets are trying to get the, the Debo rumor to the Jets. Do you guys think that has any legs? Debo to the Jets? Maybe, but I have no idea. Well, that uh, maybe they're giving him a godfather offer, the, the old offer that you can't refuse. Uh, yeah. Are they giving him like $200 million? I don't know. I don't know what the offer is, but the rumor was before the show started. You, you think he's were, not going to try? They were sending him a godfather offer that was too good to refuse. So, we'll so is he going to try once he gets to the Jets? Is he going to try? What? What? what, are you what are you talking? Talking? Evo Samuel? Of, what are you talking about? A lot of players won't try for the Jets. Le'Veon Bell, when he played for them. Uh, you think Le'Veon Bell don't... set out a year. Professional athletes, Chirk, don't go somewhere and not try. They don't try to lose their careers. That doesn't happen. No, they don't care once they get the money. This narrative this that is what I'm saying. Don't they don't care try. once they get the money. That you that they still try though you can't fake it in the NFL you can't go out there and not try you'd get hurt bad yeah you, you, he tried sometimes yeah, those guys go places and it doesn't work out that happens but it's not because he didn't try it wasn't for lack of effort yeah I've heard accusations about that with James Harden that like part of the reason the 76ers are struggling like this is because James Harden is intentionally not trying so that the 76ers fired Doc Rivers, and then they hire the coach uh, Harden really wants, Mike D'Antoni. <laughs> That's possible. Because uh, the I, Mike D'Antoni experience has worked so many times before. It's um, also <laughs> possible that whatever in our drinking water is turning the frogs gay, right, James? That's also yeah. something that's possible. That's exactly, that's exactly <laughs> what it is. It's a conspiracy is what it is. Yeah. Is it possible? <laughs> yes. Is it likely? <laughs> No, but here's the, here's the deal with, with, with Debo Samuel. Let's get back on, on track here with Debo Samuel. 
he just doesn't want to be a running back anymore. Okay. Yes. That's what it is. He doesn't want to get paid like a running back either. That too. He wants to be a wide receiver and get paid like a wide receiver. Why would he not? When he's seeing the friggin' contracts that these guys are getting at wide receiver, you know, and that, that's what his issue is right now. It's like, I don't want to be known as this hybrid guy. Like, I, I, I want to be known as a number one receiver. And, uh, yeah, it feels like that means something to him. And- you look at the, the fucking ridiculous amount of money Christian Kirk got, and it's just like – Debo's thinking, I'm better than this fucking clown. Yeah. All right. I can get I should get more money than him, but I'm not going to if I'm playing running back in San Francisco. Right. I gotta be a wide receiver and the occasional run's fine, but I can't be carrying the ball as much as I am. Right. It, if he's gonna run the ball, be used like kind of like OBJ has been used throughout his career. As mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like have some gadget plays, some end rounds, things like that, sure. But you can't rush this guy 10 to 15 times a game and, and think that his career is going to last. Right. Like you you, you want to get the most out of this guy, and the way to get the most out of him is use him in his natural position, which is wide receiver. So right. uh, if if the 49ers want to keep him, like they need to just come to terms with that. Yeah. Here's the problem, though, is like I think like teams are hesitant to trade for him because they want him to remain that hybrid player. So, and with him saying, no, I don't want to do that. I want to be strictly a wide receiver. That's why you haven't seen any type of solution in this problem. Because Dean Blow is kind of being set in his ways with, no, I don't want to be that hybrid type player. And teams interested are like, no, we want you to be that hybrid player. They're yeah, there's some of that. I think some of it, but there's, there's also might be, but like here's all Debo Samuel has to say. I led the league in yards per reception last year. End of conversation. Like yeah. look no at his numbers without itself. his numbers without his rushes. Just take the rushing game out of it. He still had a great year as a wide receiver. Trust like, me, I understand that, but I'm saying like team saw what he could do as a hybrid and like how effective he was. That's what I'm saying. I don't think teams think that that's sustainable, though. I think that they look at that and say that that's not going to last. Like, you know what I mean? I, I don't think that they – I think it's more common that guys are looking to him as a number one receiver than than teams are looking at him like, let's bring him in to be this gadget player because they know that it's not sustainable. Like, And I, I just don't think that that's part of it in my right. opinion. Right. I a, a I very it. important part of the wide receiver position is being able to avoid big hits. Okay, T.Y. Hilton has made a career out of avoiding big hits. Yep. Okay, guess what you're not going to be able to do when you're carrying the ball 59 times? Avoid, avoid big hits. That's 59 additional hits you're taking. Yep. Let's let's just say 50, and he ran out of bounds nine times. Okay, right. so let's just say 50 hits that he's taking that he has no business taking right. as a wide receiver. Yeah, they're not coming from five foot eight cornerbacks and you know five foot ten defensive backs. They're coming from these big giant defensive linemen and linebackers and mm-hmm. guys that you're not used to getting tackled by as a wide receiver. And it's just a great way to shorten his career. It's a great way to put him on the injured list. Like I, I don't know. He's great as a gadget player. He had a great year running the ball and catching the ball, but I, I think that he's better suited to just go wide receiver in the future. I agree. Yeah. So we have about five minutes left in the show. Is LeBron coming back? LeBron's coming back, yes. Yes. Yeah, most likely. You think so? LeBron's coming back, yes. More likely than not. What makes you guys say that? Why wouldn't he? Yeah. That's the biggest thing for me. Why wouldn't he? You know? If I can mess up the team's chemistry. The goal is to win a title, right? That's it. Yes. That's, it. That, that's the goal. One. Two, um, he gave zero fucks about the low ceiling <laughs> chemistry of the, the young core Lakers, okay? <laughs> Got, so he, he went out there, he changed, he changed the team to make it <laughs> as best as it possibly could be. And, oh, he did what the ultimate goal was, win a title. Mm-hmm. It, but yeah, it was in the bubble. Back here, he clears it out some of the clubs that don't need to be here. Then you go win a fucking title. That's how it goes. 
It was yes. in the bubble. What? Okay. Does it that make the bubble? Chirk, does Who winning the Chirk, Still won it. Wait, wait a second. Chirk, does winning a title in the bubble make it invalid? Is that what you're saying? No, I don't think it is. I'm just saying like you had they had more of an advantage if it was like with crowds, I think it could have been different. What? Brian agrees with me. I, I hear what you're saying. It could have been different had it not been in the bubble. I agree with that because it's it was different circumstances than we're used to, but it's still an but NBA Finals I, champion. I think the Lakers could have still won it, though. I'm not disagreeing with that. Yeah. They were a good it. team that season. It kind of it kind of felt like destiny for the Lakers to win that year because of what happened with Kobe, uh, rest in peace, earlier in the year. And Yeah, that did make a difference. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I have no problem with that. I, I mean, is it different than other titles have been in the past? Sure. But I, I think at the end of the day, that's what he went to L.A. to accomplish was to win a ring there, and he's won it. So now it's what's next. You know, LeBron's always been a guy that's – he looks at his career in, like, these stages, you know, and I think he's coming up on that moment where it's, okay, what's the final chapter going to be? And what better way for him to, you know – carry out the final chapter of his career than in the place that he's the most beloved. And, you know, he's got a billion dollar friggin' home here. You know, it, it's, he's from here. So billion. That's, so obviously he's going to get his jersey. Billion? It's a joke. It was hyperbole. Yeah. So obviously LeBron's going to get his jersey retired by the Cavs. Do you think he gets his jersey retired by Miami? Miami? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Miami, yes. Yeah, not Cavs, Lakers, yes. Right? Miami, yes. Lakers? Lakers no. No. Mm -mm. I agree. Yeah. I think the problem, Davis... problem with the Lakers one is he's worn two different numbers. Right. And he's only been there for three years. They're not going to retire three. both of his numbers. They're and not that championship's not going to be that memorable. Are, are you kidding, Chirk? Do you remember what was happening in the world at the time? It's almost it's that memorable. memorable. Yeah, it's yeah. Anything. It, it, it stands out as opposed to the other ones. You know, it's like yeah. everybody remembers where they were at in 2020 and what was going on. So right. That, yeah. that legacy like that. and that championship will last longer than a lot of other ones. So, Next yeah. Out, I mean, like when LeBron won his first champ, won the Cavs their first championship in franchise history, that title carries a ton of weight because in oh. many people's eyes, it broke the 52 year curse. Because it did. It did. And and Cleveland came together. I remember that. That was such a great time. We were the champions. Yes. We could be the champions again. And that's why I say you bring LeBron home. I that's agree. Right. But what about that chemistry? What oh, about it? He in what, in what way would LeBron <laughs> not fit in with those guys? Like he, He's going to play with those guys. And they're going to be mad at him. He could play with Evan Mobley. He could play with Darius Garland. He could play with Jared Allen. Yeah. Colin like, Sexton. No, oh, no let's get rid of Colin Sexton and Chetty yeah. Osman and Isaac Okoro and Laurie Markinen. How terrible. Wait, <laughs> all right, I, like let me I, I saw like a – let me see if I can pull this up. I and what about a, Kevin Love, too? Do you keep him? Kevin Love stays. Yeah. I saw <laughs> a, a mock, a hypothetical <laughs> trade. It was like the Cavs get DeJounte Murray and I think some – pick or something and in exchange the Cavs trade Sexton, a Coro, and a couple other picks. I want to take that. Yeah, I saw this hypothetical trade too. Hold on. I um, think we should bring back uh, Andre Miller. What? How old is Andre Miller now? He's got to be like 55. You know who that is, Brian? I know who Andre Miller is. He used to be the point guard for the Cavs. Or uh, Dewan Wagner. I remember Dewan Wagner too. He had a hundred point game in high school. Yeah. Or uh, uh, Ramon Sessions. Uh, remember, what are we doing here? Are we just playing the name game? You I think <laughs> it seems like it. It's a minute to kill. We All are right. a minute to kill. So this is a good time to do final thoughts. Does okay, great. Think? Stanley Cup final predictions. Who cares? The Penguins are dead. Sorry's out. We're going to lose in the first round. Columbus Blue Jackets. Columbus isn't going to make the playoffs, so no, they they can't. I'm going with the Penguins, of course, because I'm a homer and I love the Penguins, but we stink. We're going to get beat in the first round. I, I think we're lucky to win two games in whatever series we end up matching up in. And for that reason, I don't give a fuck. 
Fuck the Lightning. Fuck all the rest of them. But I just don't care. Okay. Penguins are no one. That's it. That's my opinion. I agree with you on that one. But I'm still going to make a pick anyway. I am going to say, how about, ooh, I like this one, Carolina, St. Louis. Okay. I like the Panthers. If I had to pick a team right now, I think I'd pick the Panthers. Mm. Um, Tampa to three, Pete, is a very possible. Um, oh, God, I hope that Stamp- doesn't happen. Stamco's had a great year, but we are about to go over on time, and nobody's going to stick around later to listen to Hockey Talk. So no. that's all I got. The streaming yeah, gods so. are saying we got to go with these glitches. Yeah, we should get going. We're having a – sorry for the technical difficulties, but we will see you next week to talk more NFL draft, more football, and more just sports in general and whatever sh- other shenanigans come up on this show. Go listen to Guarding the Corner. This is Believe One Podcast. Hour and your podcasts are found. Also, okay. read the sports room and follow Unger the Max and uh, Chirk Berserk and on Instagram and Facebook. Yes. All links will be in the description of this video. <laughs> See you guys. And, and on this podcast. Good show, boys. Talk to you later. All right.